communications to personnel, as well as other policy violations which involve interference and kind of unbecoming um, and possible harm and intimidation. Can you turn to Exhibit J6? Is that the final disciplinary letter to be issued to Mr. Yes, it is. Can you turn to page 2.1? Yes. Uh, at the end of the page, can you read the first policy violation? Yes, uh, Louisiana State Police Policy and Procedure Order number 212. Harassment and discrimination plan procedure, which states in pertinent part, uh, moving on to item number three, prohibited conduct. Number one, to ensure that all department employees enjoy a work environment free from harassment and discrimination, no employee shall harass or discriminate against any other worker because of race, color, or any other uh, basis prohibited by law. Prohibited conduct includes but is not limited to. Uh, we need to be making offensive or derogatory statements, comments, slurs, or gestures because of a person's race, color, national origin, or any other basis prohibited by law. And how did you find that Master Trooper Woodward violated that policy? Well, making the comment uh, as he did, uh, he spoke directly to the race component as well as um, the gender of the um, commander that was involved. Uh, Mr. Woodward, by commenting on the national origin as he did, and although he may have taken it as a joke, it was uh, received as being offensive to that particular employee. As such, he violated that policy uh, because of that reason. Okay, and um, can, under where you just read, can you read the next policy? Have you, have you yes, Louisiana State Police. Policy and Procedure Number 901, Code of Conduct and Ethics, Section 63, Social Media Networking, which states in pertinent part. Uh, we're going to move to four. Um, individuals employed by the department shall not publish or share any com communication which would, under any circumstances, undermine or tarnish Louisiana State Police. No officer shall relate themselves with other information, opinions, or positions that would bring adverse criticism or embarrassment upon themselves or the department, which may call into question their ability to objective and to be objective in the performance of their duties. And how did you find that Master Trooper Woodward violated that policy? Well, again, when you call into question someone's race, uh, we are sworn to protect and serve all communities, all races, all sects. And whenever you whether it's making a joke or you comment in a negative manner, first of all, it brings embarrassment to not only, and brought embarrassment not only to Mr. Trooper Woodward, but also to our department. It also, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it uh, reduced and eroded the trust that the communities have in us. You know, we also serve and protect African-American females and African-American men. So when we have troopers that do not act as though they realize or respect that community and those races and those cultures, then that provides or puts us in a position whereby that erodes the trust that the communities have in us. And as we've seen across the nation, that can have a profound impact. And then the last policy cited in the letter underneath what you just read, can you read down for us? Louisiana State Police Policy and Procedure Order Number 901, Code of Conduct and Ethics, Section 4, Conduct on Becoming an Officer, which states in part that part, uh, a commissioned officer shall conduct himself at all times, both on duty and off duty, in such a manner as to reflect most favorably on himself and the department. On becoming conduct is defined as conduct which brings the department or, or any of its subdivisions into disrepute, reflects discredit upon the officer as a member of the department, detrimentally affects the morale of the department's personnel and reasonably be expected to destroy public respect for state police offices and or confidence in the office of state police. And how did you find Master Trooper Woodward violated that policy? Well, on uh, reviewing the evidence that was presented by the panel as well as uh, <coughs> one uh, speaking with Captain Logdane, uh, it was clear that uh, it affected her morale. Uh, 
So in one way, it violated um, that policy. But secondly, as I've spoken to before, you know, when we're looking at uh, the public res the respect for our officers, that's respect we have to earn every day. We, mm -hmm. we earn that respect with our interactions, not only with the public, but with our coworkers. And when we fail to respect our coworkers, national origin, their sex, their race, then that erodes that trust internally. And that causes a lack of cohesion, uh, cohesion in the department, but it also causes a, a separation with our communities. And that impacts our ability to be efficient in our operations and protecting and serving. mentioned before, uh, Mass Trooper Woodward had already been uh, sustained on multiple counts for violating some of those policies. So that was one factor that I considered. I also considered that he violated those three um, policies. Um, one of the other things that I also considered was uh, his response. Uh, he was provided an opportunity to respond to um, his initial notification, and as such, um, he clearly indicated that he did make the tweet. Um, but what was concerning to me was that in one instance, he stated that he had never made a tweet, um, and then he came back and, and stated that he did. So um, that, that concerned me and went into my decision as well. <clears throat> well, that's just his opinion, but when we're looking at EEO matters, uh, what's very important is for us to understand that it's not necessarily what he meant and how he wrote it, it's how it's perceived and how it's received. And that's one of the things, and that's why we often talk about our communication and why it's important for us to be effective in our communications. It's not necessarily about what he intended, it's how it's received. Thank you, ma'am. That's a commissioner. <laughs> 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 